Whenever we listen to music, we tend to move along to the beat. We may casually tap our fingers or feet. The terrifying thing is if this urge seems unstoppable. But why does it happen? To answer the question, we need to first understand how we hear sounds. When sound waves enter our ears, they vibrate the eardrum, which stimulates the cochlea at the same time. The hair cells in the cochlea then transform these stimulations into signals and send them to the brain. Why? Then do we feel the urge to move when we listen to music? If the auditory system is the sole evoked system by auditory inputs, ovaries is a cog explaining our urge to move along music with the mirror neuron system. The mirror neuron system has been proposed as a mechanism allowing one to understand the meaning and intention of a signal by representing the signal in his or her mind again. In other words. The mirror neuron system enables the perceiver to imagine himself or herself doing the same action again in his or her mind. Although there are no studies in which single neurons were recorded from the putative mirror neuron system in humans, there is a rich amount of data proving indirectly that a mirror neuron system does exist in humans. Evidence of this comes from neurophysiological and brain imaging experiments. As the production of music requires the musicians to make a series of well-coordinated motor action that produces physical vibration of sounds, a sequence of purposeful, intentional, and organized motor acts will lie under the music. Then, according to the simulation mechanism of the mirror neuron system, once the listener hears the music. He or she will be easily engaged by the actual musician, and his or her motor cortex will be activated. That is why we all want to move when we are listening to music. Our current understanding of how music makes us want to move can be applied to the therapy of dyslexic children. Dyslexia is a general term for disorders that involve difficulty in learning to read or interpret words, letters. And other symbols, but that do not affect general intelligence. It was hypothesized that focusing on musical timing skills in multisensory musical activity program would have a positive effect on the language skills, compared to a control period of fifteen weeks, in which the children were simply visited in the classroom for individual reading sections. The music lessons were found to be specifically effective. In improving phonological skills and spelling skills, the activities were not simply listening activities, and they were not conducted individually. They were based on group synchronization of rhythmic actions in a circle, various imitation games, and playful, enjoyable shared experience of the musical activity. Children were invited to copy rhythms, to play rhythms all together at the same time. To listen to each other's rhythms, to imagine rhythm, to perform actions to rhythms, and to create group performances. These activities have surely helped dyslexic children with their language learning. Looking into the unlimited possibility of applying music into therapies, we now know that our casual little taps have much more impact than we think. So next time when you're listening to music, move along because your brain wants you to.